This episode is brought to you by Bento Box, a full-service marketing and commerce platform that helps restaurants get discovered, make more money, and engage their diners. Join over 8,000 restaurants already using Bento Box today to deliver better hospitality. Visit getbento.com slash hrn today to get your first month free. That's getbento.com slash hrn. Welcome to Pizza Quest. I'm Peter Reinhardt, a man on a never-ending search for the perfect pizza. This show is the audio version of the Pizza Talk YouTube series, where I engage in interesting conversations with some of the country's greatest pizza makers and other artisans. Thanks for joining me on this quest. Welcome, everybody. Peter Reinhardt here with another episode of Pizza Talk on Pizza Quest. And today, it's kind of exciting for me because I feel like I'm interviewing family members today. This is uh, Gino and Gina DiPaolo uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte's hottest new pizzeria. And uh, there's a whole lot of story behind this to to share with you. So I'm going to let them kind of tell the story. But uh, Gino and Gina, welcome. And tell us where you guys are sitting right now. Where where are you located? We're sitting in the 7th Street Market in Uptown Charlotte. We're right on the light rail. It's kind of like a big food court. Have a bunch of different vendors in here, and uh, it's pretty cool. We have a little, little 250 square foot pizza place in here, and uh, that's what we do. We uh, like, make pizzas, and we make GDP good damn pizza. Good damn pizza. GDP. So every time I hear GDP, that's what we know what it is. Um, and uh, I know this. There's a, a long story leading up to the fact that Gino D's Pizza. Uh, it's been open less than a year now in the market, but before that, you were working in that exact same space for, what, a good eight, nine years uh, yeah. uh, in our earlier iteration, which was called Pure Pizza, and uh, and I was part of that team. Uh, I was one of the uh, the original founders of Pure Pizza, and uh, and we started with some recipes that I brought to you, but really, you and a few other guys came on board as our team, and then along the way, Gina jumped in at first i think you were just sort of like you know helping out then and part of the the staff and then eventually i know that uh, you guys realized that we can make this space really you know our own and we can do some things that we weren't doing previously so why don't you tell us about that how did how did pure pizza evolve into gino d's well first i started in new jersey with my pizzeria in tom's river that's that's going to way back to the origins now yeah Yeah, and you know i was 22 years old and a buddy of my i worked for a cousin of mine and a buddy of my father said why don't you get your own place and he helped me out he was in finance and uh we did some magic and found a place and uh we opened it and it was a struggle in the beginning i was learning but i i knew what i was doing and it ended up to go really really well so over the years, we had family working and other family, and we decided uh, it's time to move on and go to Charlotte. So we ended up moving to Charlotte. From Jersey to Charlotte. I didn't know any people here, and I was a little skeptical because I just needed that push, you know? I knew I had good stuff, but I just didn't know people, and I just didn't want to fail. Right. So I, I ended up getting a job with a, a, a place uh, it was called Pie Town. Oh yeah, Great Street, and I, and I, this guy called me for an interview, and I, and I read all about about the place. And I was very intrigued by it, and I learned how to be a work a wood fired oven, and I, I had to get certified from this certain person as a pizzola. <laughs> right, <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that was me because I because uh, before there was out. pure pizza, there was Pie Town, and Pie Town we great. were baking baking and, in a brick uh, oven. Yeah. Well, anyways, you know. The guys and all, we all worked together and the place closed and we moved our own ways. And this opportunity happened and one of the guys came involved and uh, we said, well, we need Gino. And I got involved and I was doing part time. That was offered to be full time. And we created a great pizza place here. It was good. And the thing about the 7th Street Market is that uh, it's really kind of an incubator space, right? It's a place where a lot of small businesses got launched. So, so Pure Pizza, which basically brought over the Pie Town pizza team uh, to exactly. execute it. Uh, you guys were, you know, the, 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 the original team that had been all trained there 
came over and, but you had to reinvent pizza in this space, a tiny little space. Uh, yeah. it's, I call it like the, uh, the, the train, the little choo-choo that could, because it's a, that little space generates more revenue than all the other businesses in the market, I think. And, but you had to do it in a, in a space that wasn't designed for a pizzeria. You had to, you had to make every square inch count. Yeah, so when we ended up taking over as Gino D's after the pandemic, you know, I would say, wow, I've been making artisan pizza for so long. It's a totally different than the way I make pizza and the way I proof my dough and make my dough. But uh, I made some changes and uh, I ended up making myself a little dough room. And just so I can operate, because the, the artisan dough, you can make it and I can use it that day. Uh-huh. But my dough, I like it to sit two or three days it could sit even longer. Four yeah. days. It stays yeah. beautifully. Long, cold and, uh, fermentation. Yeah. A, be- a beautiful fermentation, which I learned fermentation when I moved here to Charlotte and different things about pizza. When I started pizza, it was just a handful of this, a handful of that, a bucket of water, and you made your dough, and that was it. And it's more I, of a science now. Right. It's, I think you know, I got more and more intrigued by it, learning, doing it here. So that's when I said, man, you know what? I can make my Jersey pizza here. But I could do it even better. Uh huh. That's what I came up with. And I said to my daughter, we got to do this. You know, we got to give it a shot. I like the market. I like the way it works. And we did it. And we're doing it with a conveyor of it. That's one of the be- that was one of the challenges is to do it in a conveyor oven as opposed to a classic pizza deck oven or a brick oven. And uh, and so you had to kind of that tweak all of that thing. to make it work. Yeah. And, and trying to, like, I, I wanted to make Sicilians because I was good with Sicilians at New, New Jersey. But with the deck, with the conveyor oven, my Sicilians got too big and they, they hit the tops so and going through. So I did <laughs> my grandma pies. Yeah. And when I started doing my grandma pies, I'm like, wow, this is really good. This wow oven is really. So that's what you're using. You're using a, uh, uh, um, uh, what is it? A Marshall Middleby Wow Middle oven. Marshall that's Marshall Wow it's oven. A small conveyor. It has the hearth deck on it. Mm-hmm. You, know, you oh. put the pizza right on that screen. Yeah, right on the belt and run it through it. You don't need a screen for it. How long does the does the run take from the time you put it in till it pops out on the other end? Well, the way I'm with my with the New Jersey style pizza, I, it takes me about four minutes and 10 seconds, four minutes and 20 seconds to get a good cook the way I like it. That's pretty, um, that's, that's a pretty short time. Yeah. And I run it about uh, 540 degrees. Uh, five. Well, there's some tips for those of you who are listening. So, so the conveyor is also sometimes known as an impingement oven because you've got those, those jets of hot air just impinging yeah. both top and bottom on the but, dough. But the challenge is getting all your products that you make to cook in that same cook time. Right, right. Because you can't keep switching this. Yeah, right. And I went up and down for weeks trying to get it dialed in right because the grandma cook was cooking good. I didn't want it to burn up like dark looking on the bottom. And we we ended up getting it. And it, yeah, and it, it's, it's I thought that I remember good. you called me when you kind of had like dialed in the 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 right timing and the temperature settings and everything and you said i i nailed it i got it you know i, I did i called you up and i said peter i think i nailed it um, I, I was so ecstatic by it and, and then well in in the second segment today I, we're gonna you're gonna actually take us back into the kitchen and show us how you how you create that grandma pizza which has become a signature pie i mean you make a great round, you know, Neapolitan-ish type pie. Also, the classic New York style or Jersey style pizzas. But the grandma is a square pie. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's becoming more popular across the country, having sort of been started up in, in uh, New York and Jersey. Everyone yeah. makes them up there, but no one knew them down here. Uh, there's a few people doing them down here. But now you've got something that is different and better than everybody else's version. And it's 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 just one of the many reasons people are coming. Um, but before we get into that, I want to get asked Gina a little bit about what you know. When I first met you, you were, I think, if I'm not mistaken, you were still a teenager, I think. And you were you were just a kid. You you and your twin sister were, you know, hanging out. But you were there more than your sister. And yeah. and sometimes I saw you on the cash register and sometimes I saw you and dad in the back, you know, like duking it out over something, you know, and uh, and and then all of a sudden, next thing I know is you guys are now partners. And Gina is technically right the owner of Gino D's. Yes. Is that right? So how did that all happen, Gina? What, uh, Gina, why don't you tell us a little bit about about what your journey? 
Well, after working the cash register so long, I mean, not that I got old, but I just started to enjoy the craft. Even since I was a little girl, I started to enjoy the craft and working with the dough and um, learning the different parts of um, the process. And um, the process is just so beautiful to me that um, I just wanted to enjoy, I mean, learn every part of it um, from the artisan style dough, from working at Pure Pizza, but even from when I was a little girl, learning dad's process and the little bits and pieces of just throwing it <laughs> into the bowl. Um, and even at home, um, making my own doughs from um, putting um, beer, making a beer crust or the oh, different yeah. things like that. Um, it just has always intrigued me. So to climb up the ladder and just do this with my dad has always been my dream. So, so it's like in your DNA to be a pizza maker, you, you, you kind of grew up with it. And uh, I, I always says it, it, it. I always say it runs through my veins, and um, I came out of wanting to make pizza. I it uh, it just intrigues me. Well, you know, I th I, I think that's really interesting because in, in my in my research over the years of finding out, you know, what what differentiates great pizzerias from just the average good pizzerias, you know, uh, uh, one of the hardest things is to find is is continuity from generation to generation and so it must be really pleasing to both of you to know that that essentially you gino you've got something to pass on and gina you're taking the the baton and running with it the passion is definitely there and it's been passed down oh, through yeah. our family from his cousin showing him and then him showing me the different processes and um, everything like that it's definitely um a legacy it's definitely a legacy oh yeah i That's, learned about the jersey shore to make pizzas yeah that's how I learned. Well, th th that's right. And 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 then we're gonna we gotta ask you this though, because you know, we keep throwing out Jersey, Jersey, and you know, people think of New York pizza and they think of you know other you know, Chicago style pizza. So what is Jersey pizza and what and what differentiates your Jersey style of pizza from what you were doing like when you started at earlier here at Pure Pizza and at Pie Town, which was not quote Jersey pizza? What what have you done uh to kind of establish the Jersey stamp on your, on your pizza. No, I, I think it's just the difference. I think it's the passion that I have for it. <laughs> I just want, you know, I tell all my customers when they come in and they, they, I listen, Hey, Jersey phone number. Hey, yeah, and we go back and forth. And I tell my customers, I want you to have the best pizza you've had in a long time. And I want you to be my customer. And I want you to know that I'm your pizza guy. I think uh -huh. you can actually feel it in the dough. That's how you can it, feel it, it when yeah. you're working, uh -huh. working the dough with from. I, I don't slap the dough around, no, and I make sure so it's proofed it up. I make sure it's yeah. it just has to be at right temperature for me, just to get the crispness yeah. and yeah. the lightness. And my 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 dough is light. It's not doughy. It's not gummy. Um, that's right. the difference I find with a New York style dough and, and and my Jersey. It's my Jersey dough. Jersey. Uh -huh. I, I I call it Jersey pizza because it's the way. It's my my love for it, and it's just it's just me, and I want it just to proof nice and be good, and and just to be light but crispy, and and and, and that's the difference. You can look at a New York style dough, at a pizza, and they, they say it's New York style or my pizza, and you see a difference because I think it's from the love. I uh -huh. really do. It's just, well. Uh, so in other words, what makes it Jersey pizza is is that you're Gino from Jersey. You guys are from That's Jersey. Right. That's you're bringing, it. What you're bringing is the Jersey experience of love, passion, uh, you know, and really the passion uh, and, and now the craft also that you've been honing for for since your childhood. You know, the the so all that together, it's not that anybody else can throw out the name Jersey pizza. It's 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 the person more than it is the name Jersey. It's the person who happens to be from Jersey who's bringing the Jersey experience. I really taught myself. I mean, and I, and I had to just do everything. And I, I, I always watch and keep my eyes open, watch things, but I kind of learned and tweaked myself as I went along and it just got better. And every time I did it, it got better and better. And it just, it's, it's, I'm, I'm blessed. I am super ecstatic. How great. I really, you know, I'm not blowing my own word, but, Damn, this is good pizza. Yeah, I know that's, and I know because you're so excited about it. Still, after all these Damn. years, you're excited every time one comes out of the oven. No kidding. And I want people. I tell people, if I don't eat it, I ain't giving it to you. you know, right. I want. I, if I want to eat your pizza, then you can get it because I well, know it's going to be good. Well, you guys know this story, but you know, years ago when I interviewed Chris Bianco, the famous pizza maker from Phoenix, about you know what 
what mm-hmm. makes his pizzas so good. And in, in the end, you know, of the whole thing, it's basically just like you saying, he says, it's because I'm the one who's making them. And it's, and he also said, he said, I can teach people how to make a pizza, but I can't teach them to care as much as I care. And he said, if you give me somebody who can care as much as I care, you know, we can make him a world champion pizza maker. And it that seems is, like you're bringing that caring that to the whole so process. True. Damn, that is true. Yeah. I use his tomatoes too. His tomatoes are the best. Yeah. So, so the, yeah, that's right. The, the, the Napoli Bianco oh, man. tomatoes. It's funny that you do because being from Jersey, and I don't know when, when you lived up in Jersey, if you ever used Jersey tomatoes, but J- Joe Badia out of Philadelphia is using canned Jersey tomatoes, which I didn't even know existed. Uh, have you ever, did you ever make pizzas using Jersey tomatoes? You know what? I saw a Jersey pizza sauce that Don Pepino or something. I, that I, I saw and I said, what the hell is that? And I bought it <laughs> and I have it at home and I never tried it yet. Uh-huh. I just, you know, I, I just don't want to. I, I, I got it. I'm looking at it. Look at it now. I, I, well, I've used Jersey tomatoes on, on a pie that I used to call it a summer pie. I used to put uh, yeah. nice Jersey tomatoes on it with some red onion and almost like a uh, bruschetta pie. Well, so you know that they're sweet. The Jersey tomatoes, you know, for people who grew up in the in the Northeast, like you and I, the Jersey tomatoes are like, you know, it's part of our culture and it's a legend and we love them and we're attached to them. But uh, but, you know, you uh, and we were the ones actually together that brought the uh, Bianco de Napoli tomatoes into yeah. Charlotte. Now a number of places are using it, but we were the first. And and so uh, that's just one of the things, one of the the tricks, so to speak, of of that through your passion translates into the pizza. Well, what are some, before we move back, we're going to end this segment in a second and then we'll come back and on the other side of the counter and see the pizza being made. But what are some other sort of techniques that, that you bring to the table and that you're passing on to Gina? My techniques, I, I just, it's proofing the dough, keeping it proof right. And I like to work with a room temperature dough. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, and then and I like it to be blown a little bit. I like it to be blown up a little bit. And people are going to, you like it to, yeah, puff. And, and I know people are going to want to know uh, this like, what, what ch- cheese choices have you made? You've made a, a tomato sauce. You also still use, in addition to uh, Bianco, don't you use also some Stanislaus tomatoes for some of I yours? use Stanislaus in my, in my regular pizza sauce, but my grandma's, I use the Bianco de Napoli. I, I, I like, um, I use grande and nothing else. Grande I, cheese, huh? I've always used, I used to always blend a, um, a grande with a, a, another whole milk. And years ago, there was a, a whole milk SNR cheese and I loved it. And I mixed that with the grande and it was real rich and it was phenomenal. Then I used the Lasanti back in the day, but now I like just the whole milk grande. It flows nice. You, you don't get the grease. You don't get the, you know, I, I know I learned cheese. I know when it's too fresh, it burns. You get the burn on top. You know, it's just. Yeah. I, said, I saw also the, when I was there last that you have added to the menu a uh, a hot honey pepperoni pizza. Yeah. Uh, so and so hot honey is becoming a big national craze. Uh, what kind of pepperoni do you use? I'm using the Izzo pepperoni. Uh, it's, that's yeah. the best. It comes so, in yeah. cup, gets cups. It gets charred a little bit on the outside. I, I've tried the other. You know, companies say, "Oh, we have this. We have cup pepperoni." No, you can't. You can't mess. You, that's you it. Yeah. Bar, you use the best of the best, and you're. And that's it. And I think that's really the bottom line. Is uh, is is one of those brands now that's taken pepperoni from generic to artisan level, and so essentially your commitment to quality and ingredients. Oh, yeah. um, you know, it's just coming through and all the choices that you're making. So why don't we do this? Let's take a, a, a short break. You and I, and I'm going to give you a chance. We're going to, we're going to come back in segment two and, 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 uh, we'll move the cameras and get you in the back there. We can see the, uh, uh, the kitchen in on the screen that no one's in right now. We're going to move you into the kitchen. And uh, why don't the two of you kind of take us through the process of making a grandma pizza or any, anything else you want to show us? Uh, because this is, uh, this is exciting, uh, especially I think, you know, to, for me, it's exciting because I'm seeing all this lifelong long experience um, presented in a new reimagined form. And then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, where the future lies for Gino D's, because this is a tiny little space. I don't know if it can contain you for much longer. But from what I understand, you're doing more business in just the last couple of months than than the previous incarnation did, you know, at any time before. So people have found out about you and they're making the trek to Gino D's to get pizza. 
I, I actually sold out this weekend. I, I, I was so busy Saturday. I just had enough dough to get me through Sunday. I thought we closed about two hours early because I just I had two doubles left. I said, I'm not going to stand here. I'm done. Go home and rest. Oh, that's a good so problem to have. Through. I like the dough to sit. Yeah, good problem to have, but certainly uh, your customers don't want you to run out of dough. So oh. we'll be back with Gino and Gina DiPaolo in just a second. Uh, thanks for being here with us on Pizza Talk, and uh, I'll see you in part two. No problem. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Pizza Quest right after this break. This episode is brought to you by Bento Box, a restaurant marketing and commerce platform that helps you get discovered, make more money, and engage your diners so you can deliver great hospitality both in person and online. Did you know that over 70% of diners research a restaurant online before going in person? Your digital front door is more important than ever. Let Bento Box design and build you a website with online ordering and catering e-commerce, and event management that is optimized specifically for restaurants. With built-in marketing tools like SEO and automated email campaigns, keeping your diners engaged and coming back has never been easier. Join over 8,000 restaurants that leverage Bento Box to power their digital presence and deliver great hospitality. Visit getbento.com slash HRN today to get your first month free. That's getbento.com slash HRN. We're back with Gino DiPaolo and his daughter, Gina, the, the father-daughter combo, the power behind Gino D's Pizza in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Gino, you're standing right now in front of your uh, grandma pizza crust, which I see is a, it's already been baked. The crust itself has been baked once, a bar bake. And it looks like yeah, it, it's ready for the second phase. So let's let's explore what this means. This grandma pie. You, know, you make a grandma pie. It's popular up in you know in New Jersey and New York. It's starting to spread around the country. Everybody's starting to get into grandma pies. But what differentiates your grandma pie from say Umberto's, which gets credit for being sort of the the uh, the, the founder of that style? What, what makes yours different from theirs? Where they where they do it in a single bake? I double I double bake it, and it's it's, it's a thinner, thicker type of a Sicilian pizza, you know. Um, the grandma like when grandma used to make it years ago in those little sheet pans in her kitchen. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I. Uh, that's the way I always interpret. That's where the, the the yeah that it evokes that that whole image of the of a the, the pizza we grew up with baked in a home kitchen, and and so the but the dough. Is not that thick. Most people think of a maybe think of a Sicilian when they're thinking of this, and that's a much thicker dough, maybe an inch thick. Whereas your your crust looks like it's only what about a half an inch thick. Yeah, it's about a half inch thick. That's it. You know, it's just uh, not nice. Just like see that, that w when you flipped over the dough just now, uh, one side was pretty caramelized and the other was still kind of white. Which side does it? Do you bake it? Which side up? This is the side that I'm going to sauce some cheese. In. Uh, so the, the the caramelized sauce side gets is still the upside, and then I see you've got a piece of dough in a pan that is yeah, has not filled the pan. Starter. So this this is how you get them going. So you right now the it's covering about uh, 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 two thirds of the pan, three quarters of the pan. Are you going to press it out to fill the whole pan? Yes. Well, what I did was uh, I took the doughs. I like to proof the dough. And then once they're proofed, I take them out and I put them in these pans. Now, I don't use the traditional the steel pans like everybody used for the Sicilian pans. Uh -huh. First, I'm just starting out here, and I couldn't afford to buy those You're pans. Right. They're very expensive. Yeah, you use what you got. I try to do them in a regular sheet pan. Uh -huh. And and, I, and it, I pull the regular sheet pan. What I do is I proof the dough and I put them in. I oil the bottom of them on the pans. I push them out. And you do you grease the pan? Yeah, it's my. And what do you, and I and, and you know this is this is one of those uh, uh, controversial uh, parts of the process. But but what do you use to grease the pan? You you don't use olive oil. Do I got to tell you? Yeah, well, you don't have to tell us, but I think I think it's kind of I think it's important for people to know because this is uh, this is the way it's done, you know. And and this and my what I found over the years. When I used olive oil, I just didn't like it. Didn't crisp up enough. 
Uh-huh. So I use vegetable shortening. Yeah, like a Crisco type shortening. Yeah. I, I like the Crisco. Yeah. Now, and that, with, I've done it with the butter Crisco. I've tried it. Uh-huh. I, I like it with the regular Crisco. And the key to it when I do them, I just put a light amount in the bottom, in the, in the center. Yeah. So when they, they're proof that I pushed them out, and I, that old buddy of mine taught me this years ago, when I made Sicilians, your edges usually stay in. A lot of Sicilians, they say they... They shrink back. In. Yeah. Well, that that's what I'm seeing as you're pressing this out. I mean, it pressed very... It was very extensible. You were able to dimple it out all the way to the corners, and it's staying in the corners because that shortening... It's solid, so it holds it in place. It doesn't slide back. Yes. But the key is also this dough is warm. I had it in the proof box. I had it out for a while. So, so it wouldn't work if the dough was just cold out of the fridge. What I like to do is I like to, I like to have my dough proofed. Yeah. I like so to I'm work looking, like this. It just performs best. My so dough what I'm, what I'm seeing is, is a dough that has been a dough ball that has been ex expanded. And it looks like it's it's really ripe and ready, is what what you're saying. Go. Yeah, that, all right, all right. So now you've got one that's uh, already pressed out, and then you've got some that have already been pre baked. So what I do is once I push them out, then what I do is I light sauce and a little bit of water, and sometimes a little olive oil, and then I'll, I'll dimple it. Uh huh. You'll dimple. So, and then so you I put it back in the proof box for maybe an hour. Okay, so you let it rise for a little bit. You've got. You've got a small amount of sauce and oil in there. Uh, proof it for about an hour to get some gas and aeration going. Yes. And then and then it's ready. Like, and then the orders start coming in. So you get like, you've got people ordering the grandma pie. You've got to have one re ready to go. Well, see, what I'll do is because these cook at a different temperature, I have to get here a little earlier in the morning and have my, my other temperature turned down. And I've produced maybe 80 of them at a time. Ah, I see. It takes me a few hours. Yeah. And I put them ready like this. And like I said, I put them in a proof box. I take them out. And what I found, I have to dock them. If I don't dock them, when I cook them, they'll blow up. So you do it with a fork? You just put fork, well, fork, fork? Docker that I use. A docker. Okay, good. I was pulling the, uh, but if you don't, if you don't put those, those uh, poking the holes in there, then the dough is going to balloon like a pita bread. Yep. There's your docker. I always think of those dockers as like a medieval torture device. They they look like, you know, with the spikes coming out. I never liked the things. I never had these. I always used to fork. I was the old uh, old school. I, old I, school, I, yeah. I know. You've come, you've come a long way, you know, going into modern technology like a rolling docker. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I like the old, the old fork hat. Right, right. So what I do is I'll take them. So this is, I didn't set the oven temperature down lower, but I just wanted to show you the basic. I say, yeah, yeah. So then this is the par bake. You've got a, just a little bit of sauce on there. So that's some of that color that we see on the upside of your of your uh, bake crust is from the tomato itself. Um, tomato and a little bit of water and a little bit of olive oil. And the, I say, so that way you're not going to burn it. Yeah, yeah. You, you want It has to be able to stay in the oven long enough to bake but not burn. Yeah, I, I find putting that in there, it just, I don't know, I did them without, and I just don't let it they brown a little more. Yeah. I, I just, I just like the way I do them. <laughs> sure, but this is the challenge now. You're doing a twice bake at a high temperature, you know, uh, intensity. So you've got to be able to get it out on the second bake and still be moist and creamy on the inside and crisp and snappy on the bottom. So uh, I know that you've got a couple that are already finished. You've got some ready to go into the final stage. So orders come in for a grandma. Can you show us how you assemble that grandma? What I do is take my my I'm using the Belgioso fresh mozzarella. I like the Belgioso. You know, I've tried a few different. I tried my the Grande. Yeah. Uh, the Grande, it's a little the, the new uh, Aviola Grande, I think it is, the, the uh, fresh mozzarella. It's yeah. Too soft for me. Too um, soft. Uh -huh. I tried slicing it. I don't like the way it comes out slicing it on. So I've been actually shredding the fresh mozzarella. And what I do is I put it in, put it down. It's not a heavy amount, but just enough because Grandma never put too much cheese. Most of grandma's pizzas were always light cheese. So I, what I'm seeing you do is that you're you're putting uh, strips of fresh mozzarella over the surface. I'm just covering it, covering this up with the fresh mozzarella. Then what okay. I do is I take my grandma's sauce, my nice San Marzano tomato, 
you know, it's what I like to use. You know, we're really simple. It's Bianca and Apple. You know, some basil. And what I do is I make my little stripes. Like the, right. So you're actually not covering the entire surface. You're putting stripes, kind of like Detroit style, red stripes. Exactly. Uh, on, on, on a diagonal across the, the pie. So this... This uh, rectangular pie has about five stripes of sauce that yeah, are going to get baked over the cheese. Oh, it's maybe six, a little dab on the corners. And then... I make a... Uh, it's like a pesto, but there's no cheese in it. Is this your Palermo sauce? I call it a Palermo sauce. Ah. I have a gentleman, my buddy Giuseppe worked with me years ago at Gino's in New Jersey. What a fantastic guy. Yeah. And he was from Palermo. Ah, uh, there you go. I made this, and he, he showed me, why don't you put a little of this in? I said, I, I said, just said, you know what? We're going to call it Palermo sauce. There you go. So your Palermo sauce is kind of like a pesto, but without the cheese. There's no cheese in it. So, so, it's, no a, so it's, it's it's no nuts. Yeah, so it's basically a basil sauce, a basil and oil sauce, yeah. Yep. And what I do is, I don't like this. I want to get a better uh, it looks like you're getting ready to squirt some over the top. You're going to squeeze it out of a bottle. In like again, like real Italian flag, the red, white, and green. There you go. So you're you're putting green stripes of the of the Palermo sauce in between the red. That's and the way so, I like to do it. So you got the Italian flag there in front of you. Exactly. And then I take them. It goes directly into the conveyor, and like you said earlier. It takes a little over four minutes for the conveyor to run it through the impinger and finish baking it. So during that time, uh, the cheese is going to be melting. The under crust is going to get caramelized. And ideally, if the settings are all the way you you know intended them to be, when it comes out, you're going to have a pizza ready to uh, finish off and serve. Yep. It's, it, it, it's just it's dialed in perfectly. It's right on the money. So while it's baking, it's going to take a few minutes. Maybe we can talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, the, the sort of the process that you came to to figure this out. Because it wasn't like this is not the way that you were making them up in New Jersey. This you had you had to adapt to a whole new oven and setup yeah. in a tiny little space. Uh, so what was your learning curve like for that? Well, like in New Jersey, you had the Y six hundred, the big the deck ovens, and there was always that one oven you didn't use only on the weekends. And right. you would hear make make things the and stuff like that on the weekend. You lose your mind. And I always <laughs> use that bottom oven to you push them out and then you put them in there, let them proof. Yeah. Well, here I ended up having to get a proof box because I have no room. You're right. But you get them to proof nice, and you get them up. Catch this guy up here. This was the uh, the temperature was a little up. But this was the first, the first bake. Oh, this yeah, you're showing me one now that there was just the the plain dough going coming out from the first bake, so it's coming out of the pan now, and you yeah, see it's the bottom, the bottom. I mean, like I said, I left the temperature up higher, yeah, so it got a little browner than usual. Yeah, it's got like this. Yeah, so see so on you, the next one that comes out is the true way it's done. You know, and you'll see the bottom will be nice and caramelized and beautiful. Right. So th that's part of the trick is is knowing, you know, not to overbake it because, you, again, you don't want to drive off so much moisture that you end up with a piece of cardboard. You exactly. need to have. I, if I did this one, made it this way, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come out of it at that high temperature. The, it's the first bake. You know, it's overcooked. Ice. Yeah, it's overcooked. Yeah. So you had to for the first bake, you have to cook at a lower temperature setting than on the final bake. Yeah, it's a lower temperature. That's why you have to. So that's why you have to bake so many ahead of time. You got to get them made up because you can't shift the oven temperatures in the middle of a of no, a rush. That's the problem with the conveyor oven. Yeah, it's, it's but, an okay problem. The only real problem is just being here to have to do it and get everything done so you can open up for your regular uh, service. Right. So so you know. When you have so when the time comes that, you know, the, the, the people are discovering you, you've seen just in the few months you've been open that your lines are getting longer and longer. Every week you're setting a new record. Uh, uh, and then so what what's where can you go? How can you expand your capacity? Uh, do you need a bigger space? Do you need um, another oven, a second oven to put on top of this oven? Definitely a second oven. 
And is that is the room? If you if you did get a second, could you mount it there? Not here, no. So, so you need to move. So so you may be able to move within the market itself to a bigger space, or you may have to go you know to another location altogether. Well, I'm hoping I, there's a spot that I'm looking at here that I'm I, I've asked the the uh, uh, the people that run this market if I would, would be able to take the spot. It's a bigger spot, but I'd be able to put two more ovens in and uh, expand my menu a little bit with a few more different jersey items. There you go. Yeah, because it's got to you got to keep that jersey theme going. <laughs> what are some other jersey items you would add? Well, I mean. I really would like to do my my eggplant for my pizza because I make a really good eggplant. But I have a friend of mine that's coming on board with me, and uh, he's from Philly, and we want to do some other stuff. We want to do some nice Philly cheesesteaks. Here's the five when it's coming out of the oven. Yeah, I think I know who that Philly guy is. Uh, next, yeah, the but, next time I see you, we'll, he'll be. He's coming on board very soon, I think. Uh, I see the pizza now is coming out of the uh, the back end of the oven. Now the conveyor is bringing it out, uh, and I know you've got to wait. It's still baking till the entire thing emerges because it's still getting blasts of heat. But now we're starting to see caramelized cheese. We're seeing the sauce kind of set in place. The Palermo sauce has gotten a little darker, so you got the red, green, the white of the cheese. So you've got those those uh, sort of margarita thematic colors going essentially this is like a grandma margarita you know in one sense exactly and yeah oh look at the ender crust now i'm seeing the ender crust it's really good golden dark brown uh but not burnt but a golden brown um and so you could i expect that you probably have a really nice snap when you bite into that oh yeah so this is this pizza now ready to cut and serve or do you have to do anything else to finish it off Oh, it's ready to cut and serve, Peter. Okay, so there's Gina saying it's ready to cut and serve. So you put it on a, uh, you know, on, on a, a serving paper. Do you, um, how do you, how do you serve it? Do you cut it into squares or what? Cut it in squares. I cut this in six. Six. So I see six pieces. Six, six okay. pieces. Okay, so you got six square pieces, and. I wish I could be there to take a bite out of it right now because I can see the cheese is oozing off the side. You got this great caramelized bottom. And then uh, when you bite into it, maybe Gina could take a little bite and describe the textures and flavors because uh, are you doing it? Okay, you got it. So are you getting what you want? Did you get what you wanted from that? I told you I tweaked it. It's better than ever. <laughs> so you, you made another tweak. So what, what was the tweak that you made? Well, I just added an extra half ounce of dough to the of dough. recipe. That's right. So it's a little more dough than it was the last time I was in. I can't wait to come back and try it again. You don't see it much. You see how nice it's just. Yeah. You know, I have to say, you know, every time I have people that come to, when people come to Charlotte and they want to go get some pizza, I always bring them over to your place. And uh, now I've got to bring them in because the last time I was there, we, we always get the grandma pizza. By the way, you're, your round pizzas are also fantastic. The, they're still the best round pizzas in the city too. But wow. uh, but the thing is that that the grandma is something that they're not going to see everywhere else. So we always get at least one grandma. Plus we usually get either that that pepperoni with the hot honey, or we get or we get uh, you do it. You did do a an eggplant pizza for us one time. Are you still doing that, or is that something? Well, I do it. Well, like I said, I, I like the eggplant, but I'm you know I had to I had to buy the eggplant from one of my distributors. Yeah, and that's really funny. If I had this space, I like to do my own eggplant. So that would be in New Jersey. The eggplant is the best in New Jersey too. I see. There you go. So, so if you if we can get you a bigger space, you could expand not only the volume of what you produce and serve more people, because you're going to need to be able to you know uh, uh, have space to because the crowds are growing. Uh, but then you're going to also be able to add some menu items. I know you already do for people that, that uh, you know, have not been there. Most of you who are watching haven't. You do garlic knots. You do a roll up. You do some kind. What do you call the, the, that roll up that looks like a like a little uh, stromboli, so to speak? I call them bites. It's just, it's just like a, a pinwheel. It's like a pinwheel. A pinwheel. Yeah. So you, do you make like a stromboli type thing where you roll it up and then you slice them into yep. like cinnamon buns shape and then you bake those off. So those are like, uh, again, a little mini pizza bite, so to speak. And what I've been doing too, I've been making uh, people love garlic knots. And I said, how can I change this around? How can I get people to buy more garlic knots? 
We do a cinnamon sugar garlic and hot knot. Oh, yeah. That's and great. Also, I've been doing them, you're topping them with mozzarella and sauce. So, like a, a pizza knot. You there you go. Yeah. Knot, and then thin. they love them because they just, it's like almost like a monkey bread. After you uh, put yeah. the yeah. knots in the tin, right? And you sauce and cheese them. And when and they uh, pile the cheese in, and they take they're them like, out. They're like pull aparts. And yeah. And you also do sandwiches like on you make a focaccia and make sandwiches too. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. All right, he's gonna show us your so the so what's that? So the I know that the focaccia is uh, thicker than the grandma pie. So you've got a so there's that thicker focaccia style more you could theoretically you could do Sicilians on that too, but it's about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter thick, beautiful. Focaccia, look, baked in a full size sheet pan. Uh, there you go. I'm seeing a, a golden brown on top, a little lighter on the bottom. And then what, what do you do? Do you slice them across to make a sandwich? Well, we, I cut them in 16. I just want to show you how nice. And this is all my, my same dough. Same dough to make all these products. And it's, it stays, it, it stay really nice. So, so we, now we got a big thick. You know, it's a, like a loaf uh, almost that's thick enough to cut across to be able to make sandwiches, right? Yeah. We call it, we try to be a little Jersey funny. We call it fucker bread. <laughs> right. you know, we ask people, do you want a fucker sandwich? We make chicken parm fucker sandwiches. Italian fucker from focaccia. So fucker sandwiches. Focaccia, we say fucker. Because people love to they say those words. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, look, look, it's that's the joke and the fun that we like yeah. to have. With these. Yeah. So, so these, so these are, so these are, these sandwiches are are fucking good. It's a fuck. Hey, you want a fucking sandwich? Yeah. Right. 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 You know, we always get a chuckle. You know, you get the church ladies sometimes that look at you and then <laughs> right, right, right. And laugh. And but I'm sure fun. that I'm sure that the 13 and 14 year olds love it when they, when you say that. So. <laughs> you have fun with it. It's just yeah. it's all in good fun. Yeah. You know? Well, well, uh, uh, before we run out of time, can you hold up one more sl slice of that grandma that you made, just so the people who are watching it? I know some people are just listening to the podcast, but if you can see this, he's holding up a slice, and you and and in this you see this beautiful caramelization underneath. the The dough is popped open, so there's nice aeration. It's it ends up being almost getting close to an inch thick by the time you you know it, it pops in the oven, and then you've got the stripes of the. Um, Bianco di Napoli organic tomato sauce going across, and then the st strips of the uh, stripes of the of the uh, Palermo sauce, the basil sauce. Uh, you've got really what is it? What is the what is the call letters that you have? The the uh, uh, EDB. G. Say it again. EDB. Good EDB. damn pizza. Good damn pizza. And that's really it. People are coming, and and the word is out. Uh, Gino D's for good damn pizza. Uh, Gino, Gina, congratulations on your success. I'm so excited for you. I feel like this is like uh, a 50 year journey that's brand new, reinvented uh, with the next generation ready to step in. And uh, now you're now you've got your uh, proteges coming on. You're hiring some more people that can carry the load as you know, as you pass the torch. No, I want them to build their empire and there take my base that I have and I recreated that I've been doing for years and make it even better. I'm overwhelmed and I'm getting teary-eyed here. I'm, I'm just um, so happy with everything that, that it's become. And yeah. I just want it to be better and I want to just keep giving people good damn pizza. Well, we're excited for you. I know that uh, just for full disclosure, that the this new uh, this new employee that you're bringing on is my nephew Chris Reinhardt, who has worked with you before at Pure Pizza and at Pie Town, and now you've brought him back to, to help you and Gina build the empire, and uh, he's be, very excited. I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I met Chris, the first job I had in, in Charlotte, and he was just graduating from Johnson and Wales, and uh, we got to be friends, and I always tried to be the mentor because I was the old guy, you know? <laughs> right. Chris was like 23. And I always told him, you know, just when you get you be older in 30s, you know, I said, someday if I get my own place, I said, I want you to work with me. And I said, and when I, when I'm done, 
you take it over. You do it, you know? And we always kid around talking about it. And just the way things fell into place, and I, I called him up one day as a kid. It's time for you to build your empire. <laughs> You're a Reinhardt. You've opened quite a few different restaurants around here, and you've done good for everybody else. Let's do good for you. And I'm Let's happy. See. I'm so ecstatic that he could be here because Gina and him got to know each other. Yeah, the they work really well together. And yes. he's very excited uh, and uh, about being able to add some new uh, things to Philly influence. So uh, a great idea. It's going to be fantastic. So excited. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, we can't wait to hear when and after you guys get up and running with him and you and you get your new larger space, we'll get you back on again and see the expanded menu and uh, and the expanded space. In the meantime, you know, like I say, you have a good problem. You've got more business that you can handle. Uh, so now you've got to be able to grow and be able to encompass all that new business without losing quality. And I know that won't happen because you're going to be watching over that part of it like a hawk. So uh, uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. And Perhaps and. Just Thank this you. is where it came from. It started right here. With the hands. And all yep. the best pizza men in the world will tell you the same thing. If these they don't hands. Have things, you don't have nothing. That's right. That's exactly That's right. Work. So uh, we will see you. I'll probably see you way before anyone else does because I'll be in for pizza. But uh, any of anyone who's watching who's not has not been to Charlotte, if you're coming to Charlotte, you know, make sure you check out Gino D's uh, and uh, let me know. And uh, who knows? Maybe I can meet you there. Uh, Gina, thank you for making all this happen today. Yeah, you handled the technology side as well as running the business. Uh, yes, I need her for that. She's the that's that's the and that's she's, the and thing. she's also your social media person too, right? You handle all that, you know, all that side of it. You're the, 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 the pizza girl too. She knows, what yeah. She's and, doing. and so that's the next thing is you've got to, you know, at some point, you, and I'm sure I've seen you work in the oven, so you jump oh, in every now and then and run the ovens fine. and do the pizzas, yeah. So that's that's in a way that you grew up with that. You can do that when you're asleep. Pizza Quest is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org, and connect with us on Instagram and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. You can also find us at facebook.com slash heritage radio network. Heritage radio network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, and more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community. Subscribe to the shows you like Tell your friends, and please join the HRN family by becoming a member. Thanks for listening.